followed me home from the haunted farm by Manon Lysette. Today, my friends and I started celebrating the Halloween season by going to a haunted farm off in the outskirts of town. I use the term haunted loosely because this place is really just a scaled down theme park that's been in the region for over 20 years. I don't scare easily, so I wasn't expecting much from the visit aside from a bit of light-hearted fun with the friends. Who would have thought that after an evening of cheap jump scares and screaming mostly to be polite, I'd find myself sitting in my bed, genuinely shaking with fear. I certainly didn't, yet here I am, all because some thing followed me home. Whenever a car drives down the street, I can catch glimpses of it slowly crawling down my neighbor's house and towards mine, as though toying with me. It all happened because of that damn farm. We arrived at the farm late in the afternoon. It was nice out, not too hot, not too cold. The farm was neat, though it wasn't overly spooky looking in the daylight. They'd built a few old Wild West-style houses decorated with pumpkins and giant spiders, had a few creepy mascots walking around, and sprinkled demonic baby dolls where they saw fit. In the daytime, this place was a playground for kids. I saw more bouncy houses and face painting stations than scary attractions, but I expected things would change once the sun went down. My friends and I headed out to the corn mazes while they were still open, and then headed to the food trucks for supper. By the time we were done eating, it was finally dark out, and the toddlers had sprouted into teenagers. As expected, the park looked a lot creepier at night. They'd turned on their fog machines and colored lights to give the place a surreal atmosphere. The mascots had changed their makeup from sort of menacing but still friendly to sort of demonic, with a few vampires and masked witches thrown in for good measure. It was fine. Not scary at all, though. I'm not trying to make myself out to be some unshakable badass or anything, but honestly, I don't scare all that easily. I'm not really susceptible to things I know aren't real. Creepy music and plastic hatchets just don't work on me. You could blame my time hanging around no sleep for desensitization, but the truth is, I've always been pretty numb to horror. I'm more afraid of practical things, like being stuck in line for a haunted hayride for half an hour with a bunch of rowdy 13-year-olds screaming profanities to try and out-shock one another. Splinters and disgusting porta potties the first and last of which I experience at the farm. Ugh. <sighs> My friends and I walked around and tried out the different attractions. We did the aforementioned hayride, the witch's coven, the demonic funhouse, which was fun for all the wrong reasons. See, the funhouse was pretty tame, all things considered. You would walk your way through the world's most straightforward maze, and from time to time a creepy clown appears out of nowhere and kind of shuffles behind you and follows you for a bit. I can see how that might be a bit unsettling to kids, but, like, these clowns were all actors, and they weren't allowed to actually touch anyone. So there really wasn't anything to be scared of. That didn't stop this one chick from breaking down outside the attraction. This 20-something girl just totally lost it. She was sobbing in her boyfriend's arms, and I couldn't help but laugh as we walked past. Sorry, but if you can't handle a clown standing next to you for half a second, maybe you shouldn't be going into a demonic funhouse. Just saying. Check yourself before you emotionally wreck yourself. It was getting late, and we still had a major attraction to go to. According to our map, it was the scariest of them all. Four chainsaws out of four. Having heard screams of abject terror coming from that side of the park, I was really looking forward to seeing what all the fuss was about. Along the way, my friend pointed out a cemetery with a half-open gate, and not a soul in line to go in. There had been a 30-minute wait for all the other attractions, but this one was as still as the grave. Pun intended. Should we go in? She asked. May as well, I replied. The door squealed as we opened it the rest of the way. Oh boy, someone had left the fog machine on overnight. The curtains of smoke were so thick I couldn't even see my own feet. I grabbed the friend behind and in front of me just so we wouldn't lose one another in the mist. That's how dense it was. 
I didn't really like the cemetery. For one thing, there wasn't much to it. A few tombstones here and there, a crypt, some gargoyles. But overall, it was just annoying. I kept tripping on exposed tree roots and fake plastic bones. It was a pain in the ass. But it was worth it for the one genuine scare I got all night. As I was turning a corner, I felt something grab my leg. I let out my only authentic scream all evening, because I had no idea we weren't alone in the cemetery. The fog had done a great job of hiding this guy in pitch black morph suits crawling around on all fours. I only saw him because as I screamed, I also flapped my arms around like a drunk duck trying to take off, and the motion dispersed the fog for a second. The guy crawled away and disappeared behind a tombstone. My friends laughed and laughed and laughed. Whatever, I mumbled. Wasn't even scared. We found our way out of the cemetery after that and headed to the main attraction. The wait was longer than any other attraction at the farm because it was allegedly the scariest of all of them. The cream of the crop. Hell, after that scare I'd gotten at the cemetery, my expectations were pretty high for this one. And... meh. It was fine. I mean, there were guys in pretty realistic pig masks running after us with chainsaws, but even in the dark I could tell the blades weren't actually moving. I didn't feel like I was in danger. Well, aside from the very real danger of possibly losing all blood circulation in my arm, when one of the pigmen jumped out in front of us and my friend grabbed me so tightly my fingers went numb. She screamed, I just kind of stared at the pigman, unfazed. I half expected him to tell me to feed the pig. Not tonight, buddy. Not tonight. We drove home after that and chatted about our favorite parts of the night. You got so scared at the cemetery, taunted Jules. I huffed. That dude startled the shit out of me. The car went silent. What guy? Someone in the back seat asked. Dude in the moth suit. Huh? He was crawling on the floor. Oh, I didn't see him. I shrugged. It was foggy. We went back to chatting. Eventually, I dropped everyone off at the places. I wasn't tired by the time I got home, so I booted up my computer and uploaded the photos we'd taken that night. Everything was pretty normal, until we got to the cemetery. Or rather, after the cemetery. Mothsuit Guy was in the background of all the other photos I took. Which was really strange to me, since I thought the mascots were supposed to stay in their attractions. They had these lame bios for their mascots on the website, so I looked them up just to see. He wasn't listed. I felt a small knot in my stomach, but laughed it off. There were plenty of guests in costumes, maybe it was just an annoying teenager having fun. At this point, I thought I could hear a squirrel or something scratching at my bedroom window. But I couldn't spare a glance. I was too busy staring dumbfounded at the website. I had clicked on the venue map link. I noticed the distinct lack of a cemetery. The thought did occur to me that this was all intentional on the part of the people running the farm. A great way to get one last scare out of their guests after they'd gone home. This was as easy as not drawing a cemetery on their little cartoon map. As simple as not including it on a list of their attractions. As easy as omitting one spooky mascot from their character bios. I wish that were the case. I wish that when I looked outside, I hadn't seen the figure in the morph suit staring back at me, and then quickly skittering backward across the yard and up to my neighbor's roof. I wish he'd stop crawling nearer every time I blink or look away. Every time I focus on my screen to write another line, I catch him in my peripheral vision. He's looking at the window right now. I gave him a quick glance. He runs away. I can't help but worry. What happens when I close my eyes and fall asleep? I think I'll find out soon. I'm so tired. I can't keep my eyes open.